So here we go, just about sailing, February 2018, uh, right at the end of February, I'm trying to get it out for the 28th, but it might be one or two days later, so I might have to call it February the 31st or something. Um, so what we're going to cover today is there is going to be, I can't get everything to do with the rudder, and I haven't actually finished the rudder yet into this one episode, this is mainly going to be testing the, um, the expanding uh, polyester foam that's going to be the core. I didn't get the West System one in the end, I couldn't find a place to get it in the UK, I think you can get it in the States. So I got the Sikomin uh, stuff and excellent data sheets which we'll have a look at in a second. So we'll go through that. Um, lots of new viewers and subscribers to the channel and obviously this is partly because um, and thank you very much to Mads from Sail Life mentioning the channel because Mads was cutting into his rudder and found some of this stuff, concrete, and I kind of put a thing up saying, "Whoa, this this might not be this not, might not be the fun you're envisaging." And what he's actually going to do is put his rudder build off for for a little while, make a mould, and then make a rudder from scratch. And in retrospect, that's what I wish I'd have done. But we are where we are. So today's video is mostly going to be about actually testing the construction method that I'm going to be using for the um, for putting the rudder back together, which will be in the next video, and I'm really looking forward to getting that sorted. Uh, so if you are new to this channel, um, it is this is a small sailing channel. It's not one of the biggest. Um, my cameras are, are cheap and pathetic. I sometimes forget to turn the sound on. Um, it's not a DIY channel. It's just recording what I do. So if you are going to do a similar job to this, look at the comments below um, and make your own mind up. Um, I'm certainly not advising anybody to do the same as what I do. Um, so if you've done the same before, put a comment down below as well so other people can kind of learn from this. But I've quite, I've quite enjoyed doing it. I mean, you're welcome on board, by the way, and I've, I've really enjoyed doing this. Um, I do now have, oh, if I can lift it up, the new stock, the new rudder stock has been made, so I'm bursting to get this all sorted out. There were a few comments asking if the other one was really 316 stainless. I've got no idea what this one is. I have the quality certificates to prove it. Other thing that's going to be coming up fairly shortly, well, in the next month, well, when, when the weather gets nice, uh, the windows. I've got the template to test out, see if that uh, fits on the windows. They will then be manufactured, and I've got the extrusions uh, just to test out. So I'll be going to the boat finding out if all that works. So there's lots of, um, lots of interesting things going on. Uh, we've had snow today, but the weather is looking good, so I'm really looking forward to um, getting this sorted out. So the first thing is, let's have a look at this, um, let's, have, let's have a look at the data sheets first, and then let's have, actually have a look at this stuff in practice. I wanted to practice with this material because, according to the data sheets, it does look very different in its characteristics to the normal polyester, polyethylene, whatever is expanding foam that we normally see. Right, so this is the Sycom in. Um, I'm using the PB250, 250 kilograms per meter squared, which is about the equivalent of 16 uh, uh, pounds per square foot. Um, low density foam, no hollow microspheres, so it means it's basically it's pretty much waterproof. Uh, so the water is not going to sink into it. Fast expansion of the cast casting, slow hardening of the mass. So very good instructions in terms of how much you need to make how much um, and it's a four to one mix for the PB250 so um, to make 10 litres you'd need um, 2.5 kilograms i.e. a quarter and you do measure it out by weight. Very very specific instructions as to how to actually cure that but we'll, we'll have a look at that in practice. Um, it is an exothermic reaction which carries on for several hours after you've actually made the mix. Um, mine would come in somewhere between a three centimeter and a seven centimeter casting which is this lower line here and I've used the DM02 which is the slow um, hardener um, and so it's not going to be an issue. They're very very low exothermic problems. If you used for example the um, the fast one and you had a very thick heating you can be going up to and this is centigrade to temperatures over 120 centigrade after two hours so one of the things you do have to be careful of which they've warned about 
is when you do the second part of the process, don't do it too quickly. You can with small castings, don't do it too quickly because you can actually um, scorch the, the epoxy. So you have to be very aware of the exothermic properties. They say a fast um, expansion speed, and this is the one I've got the orange line up here, the PB250 with the DM02 hardener. Um, but we're talking about sort of 30 minutes, an hour or so, and um, you know that's that's not fast unless all the videos I've seen have been speeded up. But it's not. This is not something that's going to go out of control. But you still need to be careful, I guess. And this is interesting. They do a worked example of making a dagger board um, in a in a mould uh, where they're putting down um, some sort of fiberglass and then walking you through the process. I will put a link to their website and you can pick up a copy of this data sheet. And very interestingly, uh, what they do is they kind of put epoxy, sorry, they put the, um, the foam on both sides and then squidge them together. And that's what most of the commercial people seem to do. Um, and I'm not sure if I can do that, but it's certainly one of the things I want to consider. Right, so this is my heat box. Now, I've mentioned before my woodworking is not exactly the best and I put a heater element in the bottom but based on what I normally do this is pretty much a Chippendale to be quite honest so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this thermometer in there um, the ambient temperature is currently 18.2 this does minimum and maximum for those of you who think in Fahrenheit I will change that so the ambient temperature is about 64.9 nearly 65 um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop it in that box. I've just put that, I've just put that there so that it's not directly with it. This isn't particularly powerful, so we're going to see whether or not I need two of these, whether this works at all, whether I need to do padding on it. But I thought the best thing to do was let's just see if we can make a difference. So um, let me pop that in there for a few hours and see what happens. OK, so it's been about two hours. Let's see. Oh, it feels a bit warmer inside. It's a bit warmer. <laughs> I don't think this is particularly warm. It's saying 23 degrees centigrade. Eighteen up to twenty-three, and I really want to get it up to about forty. Right, okay, so plan B, I'm gonna try something else to see how this works. Right, so this is my brainwave. Just put a load of old quilts on the top of it and um, see if that makes any difference. Let us have a look. No, nowhere near. 22.6. Oh, 28. That was 20. Sorry, that's the maximum is 28.8, minimum 22.6, which is what it went in at. So yes, getting there, another 10 to go. Um, that's 83 in Fahrenheit. I think I just need a bigger bit, perhaps two heaters, um, or a better type of heater. Right, so another think about this then. Right, attempt number I've completely forgotten, but basically I borrowed a third heater. Well, that's not warm. Oh, not 100% convinced. Oh, 41, 41. That's 41. I think I put it in, it was about 23. It's been at 43. Excellent. Right, now I know it's at 41, I'm going to reset that, clear that, and see if it's going to keep a consistent temperature. So I better close this off again. Brilliant, excellent, good news. Right, okay, then I'm being ultra cautious here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of <coughs> small batches. Uh, these are little 200 milliliter containers. So I'm going to do one, I'm going to put it in the heat box. Uh, I'm doing this late at night because it took so long to get the heat box sorted out. 
Um, I'm actually going to put the lid on this when I do it, and I've drilled a couple of holes in the top to let the air out, because I have read that actually it needs a little bit of pressure in it um, to fill all the corners, so I just want to kind of see how how that works. Um, this is very much an experiment. So I've got these two things. I've done the sums. <coughs> I've got the um, the mixture and the hardener here. I've got a set of scales um, down here. I've got a mixing stick. I'm going to get a, a proper mixing thing. So you only get four minutes to play with this before it really starts to expand. I've um, got a nice little pory thing. Right, I, I've put the breathing thing on, hence doing a talk over. But um, I've ordered a little small helical whiskey thing um, to mix up so I did and it does say to do that so my mixing is not good throughout this video and I'm pouring a couple of um, making make a couple of these things into this mold and to be quite honest I was going to do a sort of time-lapse thing but nothing exciting happened it literally it expanded just the tiniest tiniest little bit and that was about all hmm Okay, so not quite sure what's happened here. This is about half an hour in and the process seems to have stopped and it hasn't expanded very much so I need to go back to my calculations which were possibly wrong. I also didn't really mix it hard enough. Um, so yeah, worthwhile to test these. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put one of these into the, um, the heating box um, and let it firm. I can't feel any exothermic reaction at all. And it's well past the stage where it's kind of expanded as much as it's going to. So um, back to the drawing board, but that's why we do experiments, isn't it? Right, okay then. So uh, that was that was a success in as much as this hot box stayed and unfortunately I've gone and pressed the reset button but when I took this out after about seven hours, it needed six hours so I gave it one extra, uh, this was saying uh, a temperature of 50 and the minimum was 38 which is what I when I opened the lid and put it in that's what it went in at so well over 40 for the most of the time on that. Um, these have expanded a little bit further which is not right because they should have stopped expanding. This is the one that was in the um, in the heat box and this is the one that wasn't so <laughs> I'm going to prod them with a stick and see what happens. I'm not expecting this to have gone well. This hasn't expanded to, this, to the state that it was supposed to. Um, so this is the one, I mean I, you shouldn't be <laughs> This really is dough. I really have made dough here. Look. That's not good, is it? That's not good. I'll have a quick chat about what I think I did wrong. But anyway, that's partly what experiments are for. And one of the things I do do, and I'm not just, just saying this is an excuse, but it is an excuse, is sometimes when I'm working with a new material, I will do the test in a very sloppy way, because that kind of gives you the parameters um, of how it how it works out. So this is the one that was in the heat oh this is the one that was in the heat box. Ah oh, that's interesting. So this is the post curing. Look. That that feels solid. So the the post curing process is necessary. It's not an option. It does say that that's what gives it the structural strength. I don't know if it'll pop out like normal epoxy does. I hope so. Oops, sorry about that bang. Aha! Uh -huh. Right. Good, 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 good. So, we have a strong bit of um, stuff there. I'm going to do another test actually. Whoops. <laughs> Maybe not that strong, I just broke a bit off. Actually, that was just a sliver. But anyway, so that's interesting. Right, so that was the final test, and that was successful. Um, <coughs> I mixed this up much more thoroughly, and I went about 30% over. It recommends you go 10% over, and it's filled up. When I, I left it for um, about six hours before putting it into the heat box, 
and it had just started kind of bubbling over to there and then whilst it was in the heat box I've used I'm using the slow resin and I think that's um I think that's probably why it's continuing to sort of expand <laughs> right then this is the old stuff and this is the new stuff and there is a difference in in weight this is about half the weight of this um, how else to test them I'm not quite sure um, I don't know how conclusive this will be So obviously, by a long way, not as tough. I don't think, let's see if I can actually break this. So this is absolute rock, and this is pretty dense foam. But this is the same density and hardness as all the other foam that's used. So uh, I'm not gonna use this on its own to hold onto the tangs. I am actually gonna glass the tangs to the side of the fiberglass. So there we go. Good old fashioned scientific experiment using a hammer. Okay so that that's kind of told me what I need to know about what I'm thinking about in terms of the construction process. So there's one more test to go but just a few comments on this first. Um, probably not a fair test to, to actually just sort of split this in, in half because it, it doesn't compress. It's very kind of solid and it's going to be the tangs are going to be enclosed. Um, but I haven't got a way of actually kind of testing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, actually put some fiberglass to, to fiberglass the tangs onto the onto the side with some um, some standard epoxy sort of filler and stuff to strengthen that up. Uh, very much along the lines of I'm going to put two videos below. One from Jeffer, who are the people from Denmark who do the most fantastic. Um, rudders and steering systems and there's a video showing them making one of their proper industrial um, rudders and you can see how they um, how they fiberglass this into the side but then they squish this in the hole and, and I'm also going to put a um, a video f from the makers of the epoxy expandable epoxy foam that I've used um, and you'll notice that what they do is they kind of have the, the the bottom mould, they, they, they fill it up, the epoxy starts to rise, they have another one and the epoxy starts to come down and then they kind of clamp it together and I think with this kind of epoxy you can do that so I'm going to make up a rig and look and see if I can kind of test this out so this will be the kind of final test and the last thing we'll do today um, so anyway let's have a look at this <coughs> okay so the next stage <coughs> of this is I'm going to mock up um, a hollow rudder to see what happens so I've, I've put a wooden frame for this together I'm just figuring out where to drill the holes um, I'm going to use the old stock as a guide uh, sorry to put in there I need to hold it sort of fairly solidly it doesn't have to be perfect it's just to watch how the phone goes and talking of watching the phone goes how the phone goes what I've done is I've got a piece of um, perspex plexiglass this looks blue but it is actually clear so that I will be able to see what's happening inside. <coughs> now I like to get these videos out by before the end of the month, one a month. It's the 28th of February at the moment, so this might be going out on the 29th, or I might cheat and set, put it out on the 30th or 31st of February. Um, but okay, I won't subject you to watching me doing woodwork and stuff, so let's have a look when I've actually put this together. Right, there's a very good reason why I don't show my woodworking, it's because it's literally so rubbish and agricultural. <laughs> I've kind of tried to glue everything up together, um, and I'm going to wait a couple of hours for this to dry. Um, I've actually, normally I use epoxy, but I'm, I've used this stuff, which is, should be quite strong enough. Um, the back bits are epoxied. So once this is all dried, I shall introduce... Uh, what I'm actually doing here because I've slightly changed my plans based on the way that I'm actually going to fill the core. Right, so this is what I've made. So this is the old rudder stock that I put into here. 
and I've kind of attached this with wood there so that tangs can't come out but I have this section in the middle and this is the clear plexiglass see it had some blue stuff on the on the front of it and so what I'm going to do partly to save I shall put this on a tripod <coughs> yeah that's a bit steadier isn't it so yeah this is kind of a mock-up of the of the of the rudder to about the same sort of volume um, so the the stock won't move so these tangs aren't held in but when I do the proper thing I'm actually gonna put some filler underneath there and then fiberglass over um, and I'm only going to do one small section to save on epoxy because I quite like that epoxy and I want to do it for other things and I'm actually going to try the method that they do in the, in the videos that I've linked below the, what Jeff and what the manufacturers do which is to put the foam in here and then imagine I'm putting the top of the rudder on and then drill a couple of holes up here just to let the air come out and then fill it up and, and see what happens. Um, and also, having only done one section, if I mess it up completely, I've got other bits I could, I could do. So, anyway, it makes sense to me. I don't know if it does to anybody else, but um, this is fun. <laughs> this, is, this is fun stuff. really doesn't look like enough does it? Really 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 doesn't look like enough. Um, hmm. It should be about a quarter full. Oh well. Tis done, tis done. Right, sorry to interrupt the enjoyment of your programme, but I've realised that I've made a mistake in my calculations. <laughs> I've, I've forgotten that there's actually a width here about... Oh, anyway, so I need to mix up a little bit more and add it, which is an interesting test to see if that works. So, it didn't look enough. It really didn't look enough. So let's, um, let's, let's take it from here, shall we? <laughs> right there, not a good situation. Uh, miscalculated, need to put some more mix in. This, which I put on with industrial strength double sided tape, is absolutely stuck down. Um, so if I would. <laughs> I need to get the calculations right, don't I? But um, hey ho, better to make a mistake on this thing than it's on the real thing. Now, luckily, I've got these holes. Oops. And I have a syringe. So I'm going to mix up the new stuff. Does the syringe fit in there? Yeah, and I'm going to squeeze some more of this stuff in and uh, cross my finger. <laughs> oh dear. Right, here we go. I'll start in the middle. The lesson here is uh, get your maths right in the first place, really, isn't it? How foolish of me. Uh, one of the things that I did sort of just flippantly note earlier was that the temperature was a bit below what it should be, um, that it was sort of whatever it was, 18, 19. What I've done now is I've, because this is, this is cold at the moment, we've got this beast from the east thing coming, which is a Siberian winter. Um, so even with the heating up full in here, it's, it's not bringing the temperature above 20. So I've actually put a, one of the heaters that I was using for the heat box, I've brought that down here and put it behind. So now the temperature here is uh, 21.6, uh, which in Fahrenheit is 70.8. And this has sort of kicked off a little bit uh, more, I think. So I think you can see where I put the extra amount in up here. That's squished up. It's starting to go over the, the, the tangs. This has come up pretty much to here. I think the trick is to make a lot of it, get your calculations right, um, get the temperature up, it's now at 24, it seems to prefer sort of 23 and above temperature for this initial part. Uh, there's another about I think about three hours before I'm planning to put it into the 
hot box. So we'll have another look at it um, just before I do that. But it's, I, I quite like this. This is very interesting to be able to see what's happening inside. I suppose I could have buried a GoPro in it, couldn't I, and then um, dug it up or something. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, good lessons learned, and I'm relatively happy with this so far. Obviously, had I put more in the first place, it would have been more effective, but um, I'm just not going to be stingy at all when I, when I actually do it for real. I'm going to put loads of stuff in and, and take it from there. Right, we'll come back to this one. Okay then, so this is um, just before it's about to go into the hot box and I'm going to kind of hang it up from well I'll show you when I put it in the box so this, there will be a gravity effect as well because this is still slightly viscous so um, it will be interesting I mean obviously we can see that that's more or less covered up so it'd be interesting to see if there's any change I'm happy with this I'm not going to repeat it I, I could do the other section but this, I think, has taught me all I need to know. It'd be interesting to have a look, see how it um, uh, goes through the second cure. Nearly at the end of this marathon. Thank you. For those of you who stayed this far, well done. <laughs> you certainly do deserve a prize. So I've kind of hung this rudder up in the hot box, put the temperature thing down there. So as I say, this is slightly sort of viscous. It's still moving a little bit. So this should be in there for... They say six hours at 40 as a minimum. It's probably going to get more like eight at 45, 50. So we'll do that and see if that's expanded anymore or what that looks like and, and take it from there. Okie doke. On with the lid. Well, here we go. Um, this, has been, this has been a marathon, as I say. So... Um, this hasn't expanded anymore, which is which is good. Um, I've learnt an awful lot through this process, and I've kind of decided what I'm going to do in terms of putting the rudder together. So it's been I've actually enjoyed doing these experiments. So uh, this has been a very long video. There's a couple more things I want to do, but I'll include those in the next one. I'm not going to redo parts of this rudder because I I know how this works now. Um, I just want to mess around with a new mixing regime and have a look and see if I can predict better how much of the mixture is going to turn into how much foam. But yeah, very happy with all of these things here, by the way. This is, um, these are the little bushes that I took out and I was just going to replace those. So this uh, supposedly uh, two hour job has turned into a sort of a two month or so on job. Anyway, thanks for, um, thanks for watching this today. Any comments, anything, if you've done similar things, if you, think I should do something, shouldn't do something. I can't promise that I'm going to listen because I will end up doing it my way, which is um, fine. But I do appreciate any comments, anything you want to say is fine. I do try and get back and answer all the comments or at least uh, uh, read them and say something about them. So, right, let's march on and into March and finish off actually putting the rudder together, uh, the new rudder together, see how that works out. Hopefully a shorter video next time. And then shortly after that, I should be doing the windows. So um, let's just hope the weather improves. Okay, thanks for watching and see you next time. Cheers, bye.